Owning an off-road vehicle can get pretty expensive very quick. So one thing I love doing to my own rigs is fabricating my own parts and pieces. My thought process for a while now has been why spend the money on the expensive lift kits, bumpers, brackets, whatever it may be, and instead use that same money to buy the equipment to build these things myself and be able to use the same equipment down the road. What we're gonna be doing in today's video has been in the making for a very long time now. This is part one of building the rear tire carrier bumper for the Green Cherokee. So we plan to carry a good amount of gear with this bumper, which means a lot of weight. So we decided that instead of having all that weight on a single swing out on just a single hinge, we're gonna be making this a dual swing out tire carrier so we have the weight distributed on two different hinges. So on the driver's side, we're gonna be running our 35 inch spare as well as two two gallon water jugs. We're just gonna be strapping them to the tire. I've seen people do that and I kind of like the idea, so I'm gonna try it. And on the passenger side, we're gonna be running two five gallon jerry cans for extra fuel we're gonna be running our max tracks and strapping our high lift jack to this side. So this is roughly 132 pounds on the driver's side and roughly 120 pounds on the passenger side. So like I said, that's a lot of weight, roughly 252 pounds worth, not even including the actual steel for the bumper. So to be safe, we're gonna be basically splitting this into two, 130 pounds over here, 120 pounds over here. So the, over here is the base of our bumper. This is two, uh, roughly two foot sections of square tubing, quarter inch thick. This is gonna go into our unibody and this is what we're gonna build a bumper off of. And that's what we're gonna be working on today. We got our hinges, we got two of them. This is what's gonna create the swing of motion for the actual tire carriers. Then we got our latches. These are gonna go in the middle of the tire carrier, latch them into place. We got two pins. So these are kind of like a secondary safety measure. In case the latch were to fail, this pin's still gonna be holding the tire carrier into place so it doesn't swing into traffic or swing into the trees on the side of the trail. And also, once the tire carriers are open, these can also lock into place, holding it in place. We got some bump stops so the tire carrier can actually rest against the bump stops, not the metal and so we don't have any rattling. And right here we have our receiver. So this is an 18 inch piece. Uh, it's a little bigger than what I wanted and probably what I need, but the only other option was a six inch piece. I was afraid that was gonna be too little. So we went with the 18 inch piece. Then we have the mountain plate for our actual spare tire. This is what the tire is gonna actually bolt to. Now this is something we probably could have built, but this was like a $20 piece. So save a little time here. For my favorite part on this table are the D-ring clevises. These are very stout pieces of metal. They're one inch thick, and these are gonna house our D-rings. Basically, if we need to pull someone out or we need to get pulled out ourselves, we're gonna be pulling by these, which means it has to be a very strong point. So we're gonna be welding these to the inside of the base of our bumper. The base of our bumper is gonna be bolted straight into the unibody. So there's no doubt in my mind that this is gonna be more than strong enough to do what it needs to do. The idea is to slide this two by four, about a foot or so into the unibody of the Jeep. I'm gonna be opening up these holes a little more because the two x four still doesn't quite fit into there. I cut these open about a year ago because usually there's only a small hole here. We're gonna be welding some nuts to the inside of this piece, which means we're gonna to have to cut this open for some access as well. So something like that. So let's get to work. As you can see, Get this to slide in and it goes in pretty damn far so i measured earlier and it's roughly roughly uh 16 inches it went in so i don't want it to go in that far i'm going to only put it in about a foot 12 inches and we're going to be leaving the rest here for the bumper and then we'll probably be removing some because this is sticking out pretty far <laughs> doesn't go in as far because of where the filler neck is for the gas tank it goes right through the unibody but there is still a space below it so once we make access for those nuts i was talking about uh it shouldn't be a problem so since i already cut these holes in the past i didn't use a cotton wheel this time because th there wasn't a lot of material i had to take off so i was just using these carbide bits they worked well and got the job done so after looking at this a little more i decided i'm going to slide this in another two inches so 14 inches total in the unibody you can see right here, this line is where the piece is stopping. That's where it stops. And then these are gonna be two other bolt holes that I'm gonna drill for this. And I got three others up front here. So five total on the bottom.
I got this piece mounted up, we got the five bolts at the bottom and the two bumper bases are coming along very well. Next, I'm gonna be measuring for the cross pieces here between the two bumper bases and I'm gonna figure out how much metal we need so I can go pick some up. And now that I'm looking at this, I just had an idea of how to make this stronger than it already is actually. Here's what I'm thinking. So this is the two by four that's in our unibody, the bumper bases. And right here are the four stock mount locations for a bumper on a Cherokee. This orange piece I have drawn out is something I'm gonna be cutting out on the CNC. It's gonna slide over the two x four and get fully welded front and back. And it's gonna add four more mount locations for our bumper. So before we go any further, I'm gonna go get this part programmed on the computer so I can get it cut out on the CNC. And I'm gonna go pick up some more metal for us. cut out a piece I'm happy with. I cut out a few other ones and they didn't quite line up all that great and I wanted it to be really perfect. And this piece came out perfect. So you can see the bracket is buttered up against 2x4 perfectly. It's a very tight fit which is good because that's going to make for a really nice weld there. Nice and strong. And I ended up doing slots instead of perfect circles for the bolt holes just so we had some wiggle room to play with. But time to get these tacked up and move on. Next is measuring for the cross piece right here. This is going to help tie the two pieces together and it's also where our receiver is going to be mounted. filming for this video and we went on a trip and whatnot and I got a little carried away and I started working on this without filming it so let me show you guys what I did so down here on the bumper bases I cut a 30 degree angle so we have a better rear departure angle I also get the hinge for the driver's side tacked on so now I'm just gonna do the same to the passenger side
just finished welding up the entire middle section of the bumper. And Obviously, we still got a lot of work to do on the sides, but that's gonna be for another day and a whole other video, actually. I think the last thing I'm gonna do for today is just put the latches on and call it a day. latches a couple days ago as soon as i did the camera died so i wasn't able to record it but they came out pretty well now they do what they have to do and that's all that matters so this is going to be the end of part one i'm going to be filming a part two where we make the actual hoops to hold the tire and the other gear and we're also going to be finished the sides of the bumper in part two anyways thank you guys for watching this has been really fun i'm really happy i got to show you guys the process of this and use a lot of the new equipment so anyways be on the lookout for part two